Hello and welcome to a tutorial on how to use Twitter. First things first, if you're accessing Twitter.com from your agency computer, you want to do it using Firefox rather than Internet Explorer. You'll notice some technical problems if you try to use IE. Here's what you'll see when you log into Twitter.com and the main thing you want to be aware of is right here, this is what's called your timeline. Your timeline is showing you all the tweets from everyone that you follow. I follow 533 people. Anything that they say will show up in my timeline. This timeline live updates. So as new tweets come in, you'll get this notification at the top. I can click that to reveal all my new tweets. The basic function of Twitter, unsurprisingly, is tweeting. You have this box up here at the top that says what's happening. This is where I'm going to type any tweet that I want to send out to my followers. You'll notice the number right here, 140. You get 140 total characters in a tweet. And as I start typing, you'll see that number counting down, letting me know how many characters I have left. When I click this tweet button, that tweet will send out to all my followers, and there it is right there in my timeline. One thing to be aware of when you're tweeting, often you'll want to tweet out links to articles, either things that you've read or things that you've written, but links can be long and take up a lot of characters. So the way we solve that problem is by using something called a URL shortener. And you can see an example of it right here. Andy Carvin has tweeted out a link to a Reuters article and he's used this short URL. When I scroll over it, I can see the full link that that's going to. So let's take a look at how to do that. Here's an article about Libya. Let's say I want to send this out to all my followers. So I'm going to copy that link. And now I'm going to go to a website called bit.ly. That's B-I-T dot L-Y. Here's bit.ly right here. When I paste my long URL into this box, you'll see it automatically get shortened into one of those short URLs. So here we go. Boom, shortened into a short URL. I'm going to copy that link. Let's just prove to you that it's going to go to the same place. And look at that, it took me to the same article. So now I can use that short version of the URL in Twitter, and I have a lot more space to say something about that article. Now, the main function of Twitter may be tweeting, but the real heart of Twitter is in following. The people you follow are the people who show up in your timeline, and they're the people who start to form your Twitter network. If I click on anyone's username on Twitter, you can see that it pops up their profile right here. So here's Cyrus, here's his name, his photo, his biography, and a list of all his recent tweets. If I decide that I want to follow Cyrus, I can click on this follow button right here. And now I'll start seeing all of Cyrus's tweets in my timeline. You have a profile as well. You can get to it up here, clicking on profile. And here's my profile, profile with my name and bio and photo and all my recent tweets. As we just saw, this is what people are going to use to decide whether they want to follow you or not. So make sure that you filled in all your information. If you're brand new to Twitter and you haven't filled in your profile yet, come up here and click on the upper right hand corner. You can fill out your profile in the settings section of Twitter. Let's talk about a couple of conventions that are used in tweeting. The first one is what's called an at mention, and that's what you're seeing right here in this top tweet. The at symbol and someone's Twitter username, that's called an at mention, and it's how we have conversations on Twitter. It's how we talk to or about someone. So here's an example right here, and here's an, an another example of an at mention. I've pulled out a couple of ways that at mentions are used. The first way is to have a conversation directly with someone. So here's Lisnup. She started her tweet at Kristen C. She's at mentioned Kristen C. 
and then typed in the message that she wants to say to Kristen. So this is the two of them having a conversation with each other. Now these conversations, of course, are public. Everything that you tweet is public. But if you do want to have a private conversation with someone, there's a function called a direct message that allows you to do that. At mentions are also used to give credit where credit's due. You can see in this tweet, Golnaz Esfandiari has tweeted out a link to an article about a U.S. Army kill team in Afghanistan. At the end of the tweet, she writes via at Guardian. And what she's saying is that she got that article from the Guardian. So we use at mentions to attribute information to someone else. Finally, we use at mentions to talk about or to reference someone. In this tweet, you can see Octavia is saying that she has handy lists for this year's ArabNet. And instead of just writing ArabNet, she actually at mentions ArabNet. And this accomplishes two functions. The first one is that it pings ArabNet. So it lets ArabNet know that Octavia is talking about them. The second function is that all of Octavia's followers can now click on ArabNet and see their profile and decide to follow them. So when you talk about someone, it's good courtesy to use that at mention when you can. Now people can also use at mentions to talk to or about you, and you want to make sure you're checking every once in a while to see if someone's talking to you. Where do you do that? It's right here, right next to your timeline, you have at mentions. So when I click on that button, now I'll see everyone who's at mentioned me. So right here you can see Nerdist says to me, what in the world is Peton? I want to be checking my at mentions so that I know that Chris Hardwick is trying to have a conversation with me and I can answer back in a timely way. Another convention of Twitter that you want to be aware of is what's called a retweet. And you see that right here at the top. When you see RT followed by an at mention, that's what's called a retweet, and that's a way of forwarding a tweet on to all your followers. When you see someone else write a tweet and you want to share that with your followers, you retweet it, similar to forwarding an email. Now you can add your own commentary at the beginning, as Zenny Jardin has done here. And if you need to, you can shorten the original tweet to make it fit within the 140 characters. But what you shouldn't do is alter the original tweet content. You want to really make sure that you're just forwarding on that information to your followers. So let's say I want to forward this tweet from Jefferson Reed. I can copy the whole content, come up here, and write RT for retweet at Jefferson Reed, paste in his original tweet, and tweet that out to all my followers. Now Twitter has recently built in some retweet functionality, so they've created a new way to retweet. And here's an example of that right here. I do not follow Muftasa, but I do follow Tom El Rumi. And what he's done is use Twitter's built-in retweet capability to forward on Muftasa's tweet to me. So he basically has just pushed that tweet from his own stream into mine keeping the username and the profile picture. So I can do that for any tweet. Let's say I want to retweet Andy Carvin's tweet right here using Twitter's built-in functionality. I can click retweet right here. And when I click OK to retweet it, I will have pushed Andy Carvin's original tweet out to all my followers. So let's take a look at my profile just so you can see it. And here it is. It shows up with Andy Carvin's name and Andy Carvin's photo, and a little thing right here indicating that I'm the one who've, who's retweeted it. You'll still see more people using that RT convention compared to using Twitter's built-in functionality, and the reason is really that you can't add your own commentary when you use the built-in retweet. The only way to add your own words to the retweet are if you use this RT convention. 
Finally, the last thing that we should talk about is what's called a hashtag. And you can see that right here. It's when someone uses the number sign and a word. Those hashtags are what we use to have group chats or to group tweets about a particular subject together so that they're easier to find. There are a couple of situations in which you would use a hashtag. So here are some examples right here. The first one is for events. A lot of times you'll see at an event when they want to incorporate Twitter, they'll set up a particular hashtag that everyone at the event will use to talk about that event. So in this tweet we see hash hack for JP. That's a hashtag that was used for a particular event about Japan. You'll also see hashtags used to talk about topics. And in this case, you have Steve Herman talking about Fukushima. So he's used hash Fukushima to talk about that topic. You want to sort of keep your eye on the Twitter ecosystem to find out the hashtags that are being used about particular topics. It'll tend to coalesce around certain popular hashtags. And the other way that we use hashtags is for memes. Memes are sort of things that pop up in the internet zeitgeist and they tend to be funny or catchy in some way. Um, and they're particularly popular on Twitter. So a couple of days ago there was a meme going around hash a hundred facts about me. People on Twitter were tweeting out facts about themselves and they were tagging them with this hashtag hash a hundred facts about me to group them all as part of that meme. So those are the basics of Twitter. I hope that that's been a useful introduction, and I hope that it got you excited about trying Twitter out for yourself.